This is Calabra, USA, a municipality of Puerto Rico, 20 miles east of the Puerto Rican mainland. Population, 726 U.S. citizens. It's an extraordinary island in many respects. In physical terms, it is 10 square miles of Caribbean paradise. In political terms, it's a powder keg with a slow-burning fuse. Since 1902, it's been used by the Navy for periodic war games. Since 1936, the target for regular naval shelling and bombing exercises. And since 1958, when the Navy first tried to buy the island out from under the Calabrians, it's been a tiny thorn in the conscience of the nation. Today, it's the setting for a struggle over that remaining portion of the island, the most beautiful part, still held by the Navy as a target practice range. The Navy says Calabra is necessary to the national defense. Calabrians say they are victims of naval arrogance. To Commodore William Mackey, Calabra is just one of many indispensable targets he offers the warships and bombers of the Navy's Atlantic fleet. You know, the Navy and the other military services have targets that they need to train on in other parts uh, of the, uh, the United States uh, that are used consistently, and they are equally as close to inhabited areas as the one on Calibra. It's done safely there. Uh, there's always a, a small element of uh, disagreement, but they are just as necessary as these targets. Uh, our American, uh, the United States proper, the citizens there, uh, tolerate this because they know it's important to national defense, and that if we're going to have a strong Navy, that we've got to practice on these targets. I think the citizens of Puerto Rico, being citizens of the United States also, uh, in many respects, uh, uh, have an equal obligation to the U.S. government uh, to uh, also participate in providing the training facilities for the Navy and the other military services. To the captain and crew of this destroyer, the USS Forrest Sherman, Calabria is a place to fulfill a training mission. The drill is the drill. General Quarters, General Quarters, all hands, man your battle station. On this day, Calabria represents the enemy coastline. Four miles away in the town of Dewey, named for a 19th century admiral, the distant shelling is a persistent reminder to the Calabrians that the island is not their own. But they have long ago accommodated themselves to the naval presence, and they play out their daily lives much as you and I do. Sherman, the exercise only approaches reality. The Navy admits the target is too predictable, the firing angles too restrictive, the distance from shore too close. On this exercise, the score was 70%, just satisfactory. The shells, non-explosive missiles, somewhat like cannonballs. Today, they fall, as they usually do, well within the target area, now uninhabited. Flamingo Beach, the target area, was once home to this man, Isaac Espinoza, a Culebran. It was here many years ago he lost his arm and part of his vision to Navy negligence. In later years, he lost his land to Navy requirements. His English-speaking son remembers. Uh, my father lost his hand when he was 14 years old. And due to the fact that he found a hand grenade, and he, do, he had no, no knowledge about what uh, he had in his hand. So he started playing uh, with it with some other kids. And afterward, they took him a machete and started hitting it. And the hand grenade went off. Besides the left arm he lost, he had injuries on his right arm. He only could use two fingers out of it, plus uh, the vision on his right eye. 
the Navy never do anything about it, and they never care about it. They don't even pay the hospital. They don't have a compensate him in anything at all. This happened in this very same area where we live, uh, because this area used to be very populated here. It used to be around 2,500 people living in this area. We moved because during the Second World War, they need some place to train some troops with the promise that also after the war was ended to return the land back to them. Because once the Second World War was ended, then uh, instead of returning the land back, they start taking more land on the island. So imagine how he feels. How do you feel if you were his shoes? This man, the George Washington of Puerto Rico, is Munoz Marin, the Commonwealth's first elected governor. To him, Calabria represents a dead president's promise, broken by the Navy. In 1961, the Navy uh, asked President Kennedy to, uh, to see what, uh, what steps uh, could be taken so that uh, Culebra would be taken over entirely by the Navy. Even the dead were to be taken out of the cemeteries and taken to mainland Puerto Rico, since no civilian would be allowed ever again to set foot on that island. I brought the matter to the attention of President Kennedy when he, he stayed with us at La Fortaleza uh, in December 1961, and I uh, I explained to him the reasons uh, why it was wrong. I seem to have uh, convinced him that uh, he should take a deeper look into the whole situation. He asked me to write him a letter giving him the details. I, uh, I did, and uh, when he answered, he said he had given instructions to the Navy to cease in their purpose. And my own term as governor ended 1964. I didn't uh, run again. So I, I didn't keep track of the details of the whole situation after that. But then, in 1970, two civilian officials of the Navy came to see me, and they were again proposing to take away the whole island of Culebra, take away the population, abolish the municipality. By the way, you can't abolish a municipality in Puerto Rico. In 1970, the Navy controlled one-third of Culebra. On April 24, 1970, they moved to acquire an additional third, the next to last step to obtaining the entire island. The shelling and bombing reached an average of nine and a half hours a day, three hours on Sunday. The combination brought the first demonstration against the Navy in 68 years and resulted in a unity of purpose that would not be satisfied until the Navy gave up Culebra as a target forever. They sent their mayor, Ramon Feliciano to Washington to find help. He found a Washington law firm to take the case as a public service. Culebra versus the Navy was assigned to a 28-year-old Harvard Law graduate, a former White House fellow, Richard Kopakin. With 10 days left before the Navy was to acquire an additional third of the island for walleye missile firing, Kopakin came on the scene. It was a pretty hopeless situation. We were representing some 750 Spanish-speaking U.S. citizens against the United States Navy on an issue ostensibly involving national security, uh, where the only forum was the House and Senate Armed Services Committee, ostensibly the friends of the Navy, and uh, where the governor and non-voting member of Congress in Puerto Rico publicly supported the position of the Navy. Pretty hopeless. But to Richard Kopakin, Calabra was a client with a case to be won. Uh, it seemed to me that Using uh, the knowledge of politics he learned at the White House in the Johnson administration, he stopped the Navy short, held them to their present target area, and got an agreement that by 1975 they would find an alternate target. On January 11, 1971, the Navy came to Calabria to sign the agreement. To John Chafee, Secretary of the Navy, Calabria was a lesson in politics taught by a young lawyer. Please, we are in the Navy uh, to be able to have this troublesome problem settled. And we wish to thank the governor, the mayor. The Navy had agreed to give up their plans for more land, to move some air targets, return some acreage, stop shelling on the weekends, a particular sore point to the Calabrians. 
Now their magnificent beach could at least be used on Saturdays and Sundays. But most importantly, the Navy reluctantly agreed to look for an alternative to replace Culebra. The weekday shelling and bombing would continue until then. To Melvin Laird, Secretary of Defense, fell the task of finding a new target site to replace Culebra. On April 1, 1971, Laird stated that by the end of 1972, he would make the final decision, where to relocate the naval training areas now located on Culebra. On November 4, 1972, he reaffirmed his commitment to announce by the end of the year where to relocate the target areas. The long-awaited announcement came on December 27, 1972. Laird had reversed himself. Calabria would remain as a target area at least until 1985. It fell upon the Calabrians as a bombshell. To the people of Calabria, Laird's reversal was a stunning blow. The United States government had broken its word. They came together on a night in February to hear Copacan and plan their next move. Calabria has suffered a very significant setback. I would be less than honest if I told you that the road ahead was easy, but I'm ready to uh, continue the effort as long as you are and I'll do everything in my power to see it through to a successful conclusion. The most recent disaster occurred on December 27, 1972. Secretary of Defense Melvin Laird announced on that day, quote, that the Navy retain its training targets in the Calabria complex for the indefinite future and at least until 1985. Look at my people in this meeting. We have been working very hard. I remember Soto the fisherman. I remember Vincent losing his job in school. Isaac Espinosa, our first casualty, losing his hand. I also remember a kid lose his life by a hand grenade. I remember fishermen losing their equipment. I look at the faces of these people still in faith to win the case. I'm sorry that the Navy still want to stay in Culebra. In doing so, the Secretary of Defense reneged on a formal commitment repeatedly expressed to the people of Puerto Rico that all Navy operations would be transferred away from Culebra by June 1975. When I heard the news, I was not surprised at all. It isn't the first time that they have tried to fool the people of Culebra. But we're fighting against a giant like David against Goliath. We're fighting for something that we know it's ours and our natural right. On the evening of January 3rd, 1973, Admiral Ward told me and a congressman that, quote, we could move off of Culebra tomorrow. It's only a matter of dollars and cents. Maybe we are too small to fight against the Navy, but if the United States have a democracy, the democracy uh, should be the way to hear the expressions of the people. I don't care how strong they are. We are defending eight miles long by four white, our own land. The land of our ancestor, of my father mother. I respect the Navy, remember me. But in Culebra, I think they are doing a, a, something that our heart cannot support anymore. They are abusing us. They are shelling our heart. The question now is, how do we deal with the problem? What steps have we taken? The most significant action we have taken is through the offices of Senator Howard Baker of Tennessee, we've introduced a bill in the United States Senate. The bill reads, be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, that the Department of the Navy is directed to terminate 
all weapons range activities on the island of Culebra and within three nautical miles thereof, not later than July 1, 1975. To Ramon Feliciano, mayor of Culebra, there seemed little hope that Congress would come to the aid of his people. Having given almost 20 years of his energy to the struggle, he announces on this night that he's prepared to give his life. He says, if the Navy does not honor its word to stop shelling Culebra by July 1st, 1975, I have no alternative but to sacrifice myself by entering the firing range. Yes, there's probably an alternative someplace. Uh, I can't tell you what it is right now. Uh, I have the feeling uh, about, the, uh, about American technology that if we're forced into something, if you give them enough money, they'll solve any problem that the military or any other segment of the, of the U.S. has, that they can get in there and they can come up with something. But from where I sit, it would be so expensive and so unrealistic uh, that I would hope that Congress would not even consider it. Jackson, the Estado de Washington. This is a great day for Calabria. This is a great day for Puerto Rico and a great day for the United States of America. También nos acompaña el gobernador del Estado Libre Asociado. Hoy es un día de celebración. Celebramos aquí un sistema de gobierno que funciona y que adelanta un sistema de valores y de ideales basados en la dignidad del ser humano. Se celebra el vínculo que mantiene unidos a dos pueblos a través de una común ciudadanía y una visión común. Today, after five years of delay, we celebrate the fact that the federal government has delivered upon its solemn commitment to the people of Calabria and of the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico. The use of Calabria as a naval firing range has come to an end. The sacrifice the people of Calabria have made for so many years in the interests of national security is over. Hace cinco años, o un poco más de cinco años, la Marina no solo pensó continuar las prácticas constantes de bombardeo y tiro al blanco sobre esta isla, sino hasta pensó que sería necesario para ella ocupar toda la isla y sacar la gente de Culebra. De aquella situación difícil con que se enfrentaba esta isla, hemos adelantado al punto de que hoy, cinco años después, terminan las prácticas de la Marina en Culebra en una forma definitiva. El honorable alcalde de Culebra, el honorable Ramón Feliciano. Siendo reconocido ante todo Puerto Rico y ante el mundo entero la lucha histórica de los culebrenses para librarse de una vez y para siempre de los bombardeos 
que desmembraban día a día el buen deseo de vivir de nuestro pueblo y socavaba constantemente el deseo de progresar, solo quiero señalar que no importa lo pequeño de un gobierno o lo diminuto de un pueblo, si existe razón, sus derechos son dialogables dentro del sistema democrático nuestro y que esos derechos están protegidos tanto por la Constitución de los Estados Unidos como por la Constitución del Estado Libre Asociado de Puerto Rico. Nuestro querido comisionado residente en Washington, don Jaime Benítez. Y hoy podemos decir en Culebra que donde quiera que se reúnen los hombres y las mujeres de buena voluntad para dar testimonio del triunfo de la razón sobre la fuerza, del derecho sobre la violencia, de la acción, de la democracia, allí está el derecho del hombre, no solo de Culebra y de Puerto Rico y de Estados Unidos, sino del hombre en todas partes del mundo que clama por justicia. Amigas y amigos, para acompañarnos en esta ocasión han venido altos dignatarios tanto de Puerto Rico como del exterior. Muchos de los que nos acompañan han estado íntimamente envueltos en los esfuerzos que han resultado en los logros que hoy conmemoramos. Hoy Culebra le vive agradecido. Los puertorriqueños tenemos una deuda para siempre con el licenciado Richard Copaken. And as the struggle was pursued in Washington, at the Pentagon, the White House, in Congress, the Department of State and Interior, and in the press, I came to appreciate the fact that Culebra was not just for the Culebrans. The achievement of justice at Culebra was as much for all Puerto Rico as for Culebra, as much for the United States as for Puerto Rico. We dreamt what seemed an impossible dream of a safe and tranquil Culebra. Together, we transform that dream into a reality. Fortunately, in Governor Rafael Hernandez Colon, Puerto Rico has a man who was up to the arduous task of turning the long page of history. Without his brilliant, constant leadership, Culebra still would be a target. Para nosotros, los puertorriqueños, esta lucha representó una prueba del sistema, una prueba de nuestra relación de libre asociación con los Estados Unidos y una prueba de nuestro propio carácter y nuestra propia determinación. Una prueba de nuestra voluntad para enfrentarnos a una situación compleja y desafiar un sistema aparentemente insensible, tratando de reconciliar dos principios nobles pero en conflicto. Nuestro derecho a la búsqueda de la felicidad y nuestro deber de aportar a la defensa común. Hicimos esa prueba y prevalecimos. Al plantearse con toda claridad la causa de los culebrenses, la maquinaria del gobierno se movilizó para su defensa. El gobierno de Washington dejó de momento a un lado los graves problemas de Estado para escuchar y finalmente ayudar a los 1.400 ciudadanos de esta isla. Y lo que es más significativo, Culebra prueba que en una democracia no importa cuán grande sea, cada uno de los ciudadanos tiene una gran importancia. Pero la celebración de estas cosas buenas y de estos principios que estamos llevando a cabo en el día de hoy carecería de sentido si no celebráramos aquí también a unos hombres que dieron lugar a esta victoria. En primer lugar, a Ramón Feliciano, el alcalde de Culebra.
y a ese joven que sencillamente rehusó perder y perseverando mantuvo la lucha, Richard Copeken. Honramos también a los miembros de la Comisión de Culebra, a Víctor M. Pons, al General Roberto Vargas, al Secretario Auxiliar de la Marina, el señor Jack Powers, y a los señores Stuart French y Pedro San Juan del Departamento de la Defensa. Y sobre todo, celebramos hoy aquellas voces en el Congreso de los Estados Unidos que escucharon el reclamo de Culebra y respondieron a su justicia. Dentro de todos ellos se destaca una persona que vino aquí a celebrar con nosotros en el día de hoy. Ese hombre que está aquí y a quien le damos las gracias eternas por su acto de justicia y por su liderato, es el senador Henry Scoop Jackson. Calabria is now a symbol of a new day. In the future, national decisions which affect the Commonwealth will not be made until the views of the Puerto Rican people have first been heard. <laughs> the resolution of the problem of Calabria marks the first step toward a new relationship between the federal government and the Commonwealth. The new relationship will recognize the needs and the desires of the Puerto Rican people to have greater control over their destinies. We must take action to end the recession and the runaway inflation in the United States. This action would also end the depression in Puerto Rico. I pledge I pledge to you today that I will do all in my power to build on the lesson and the spirit and courage that Calabria has come to represent. Our goal must be that every able-bodied person shall have an opportunity to do a day's work in a good job at a decent wage and live, may I say, in a good neighborhood and enjoy a good environment. The overriding issue facing our 50 states on the mainland and the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico is one word, jobs, J-O-B-S, and we're going to do that. Finalmente, vamos a celebrar todos en la tarde de hoy vamos a celebrar en la playa de Flamingo donde no habrán de caer más bombas donde reinará la tranquilidad donde este pueblo y aquellos que lo visitan podrán disfrutar de las bellezas de una playa como pocas hay en Puerto Rico de la tranquilidad de un ambiente de la paz que merece toda esta buena isla de Culebra, su buena gente y su gran alcalde, luchador y batallador, Ramón Feliciano.